Господу Богу помолимся. Ты воюй ваше сына, как солов отказывал, и на Yo, what's going on, guys? David here. Welcome to part two of how to sound like a Russian octopus. Now, why part two? Well, I have forgot some things in part one, and therefore I need to make a part two. Welcome to this part two of how to sound like a Russian octopus. In this video, you will get information about the vocal compression. Then I will talk about the tongue position. Then I want to talk about the soft palate. Then I want to talk about the loudness then of the range. As you have heard, I forgot so much in the first video that will be linked in the description below and somewhere here on. All right, with no further to do, let's start this video. All right, I want to start with the vocal compression. The vocal compression of a Russian octavist plays a very important role in the sound making of the Russian octavist singing voice. The Russian octavist has power. He has resonance in the voice, but he has also some very prominent, some very good uh, sound of overtones in the voice, or more to say metal in the um, voice and therefore the compression is pretty high. But when I talk about compression, what is it actually? Well, let me explain this. The compression is basically when we pressing together the vocal cords and do it much more than we actually would do it. The sound of the voice gets some really good brilliance and good overtones and uh, maybe someone will call it squillo and that is a bit required for the Russian octavist. I will demonstrate that for you right now. I sing the very first line of the song 12 robbers which is Gospodu Bogu Pomolimsia the first time without the vocal compression and the second time with compression Gospodu Bogu Pomolimsia Gospodu Bogu Pomolimsia so we could hear the vocal compression adds much more overtones than without the compression is required for the Russian octavist singing. All right, let's move on to part two of this video. All right, I want to talk about now the tongue position. The tongue position is uh, mm. Mm. yeah so I produce a sh shape of this of the tongue so the tongue is raised up in the back of my mouth. It is building a, a little horn in the my mouth it produces also some 
loudness into my voice actually when I am singing in this type of technique. All right, part three. The, the soft palette. The soft palette is actually closed when I sing in this type of technique because there's no nasal resonance going on when I sing in this technique. I use again the first line of the 12 Robbers song in the refrain, which is Gospodu Borgu Pomolimsa. Gospodu Borgu Pomolimsa. No nasal resonance at all except for the nasal vocals. All right, let's move on on the part four of this video and that will be the range. The range of the octavists begins at C1 or F1 and goes up to F4. So that means the range is right and some octavists are also able to sing to C1. All right, the next part of this video is the loudness. An octavist has to use a lot of lung power. He has to use a high pressure that's going on in the airflow for the singing. So that, that means you have to use a lot of lung pressure to get the loudness that is required for the um, Russian Orthodox liturgic uh, singing. But it is very interesting because the Russian Beso Profundo or Octavist also builds the fundamental of the entire Crier. He is basically the bottom plate when you build a house. So that means you build first the bottom plate and then you build up a house and build it up to this bottom plate. The octavist has to be a bit quiet in volume, but when it is quiet, the octavist has to be extremely, extremely loud, actually. And that is pretty amazing because the tenors of a Russian Orthodox singing, uh, Christ singing, is pretty loud, actually, like an opera tenor in the way, but only when he sings in the solo part and the this is the same for the octavist so when an octavist sings in the solo section he is extremely loud actually and that is absolutely amazing all right that was the video I will also make a part three of this video because there are some uh, interesting extended techniques that someone can use but they're only a little bit related to the uh, Russian octavist but I will tell you that more in the video for the next time. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. We will see us in the next video. Bye.